March 17th, 1943. Nazi U-boats have sunk more than a dozen merchant ships, but U-530 is being hunted by an Allied escort. It's probably like going from positive adrenaline, like you're hunting your prey in the woods, and all of a sudden a bear or a wolf would stand in front of you, and then you have to run away. But it's U-530's lucky day. HMS Beverly loses contact with the U-boat. When the seas fall silent, the crew jumps into action. Carefully managing their remaining battery power, they ascend in 30-foot intervals. He has to conserve his battery fuel because he needs it for propulsion. Otherwise, the submarine would sink deeper and deeper. After the two-hour attack, Langa's crippled U-boat breaks the surface. Their ordeal is over. <laughs> they are fortunate to be alive. Additional Allied attacks throughout the day of March 17th forced 12 German U-boats to lose contact with the convoy. What you're trying to do as the escort commander is to break contact. It's a bonus if you can attack it. It's even better if you can sink it. Gradually, the scales tip in the Allies' favor. Although U-boats continue to pick away, the two convoys approach the edge of the air gap. Allied aircraft can reach the convoys from Europe. The wolf packs are now also being hunted from the sky. Long-range air patrols, liberators, Sunderlands and fortresses provide cover from the convoy, relieving pressure off the exhausted escorts. Like the cavalry coming over the hill, the arrival of Coastal Command aircraft alters the situation very significantly. Aircraft can force submarines down. Once submarines are submerged, their mobility is greatly reduced. A 206 squadron flying fortress flies into a squall astern of the convoy, hoping to catch a U-boat unaware. U-384 doesn't have a chance to dive before four depth charges are dropped. Explosions are spotted on either side of the U-boat. U-384 sinks to the ocean floor, taking with it the crew of 47. The Nazis' lethal weapon has become their iron coffin. 